Hello folks, my name is Tim and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to be looking at how to control a micro servo motor using a hardware PWM signal generated by the Raspberry Pi Pico. And yes, as some of you have commented in my previous videos, this is in fact a Pico and not a Pico. Never mind, eh? Slightly embarrassing, but I'll just have to get it right going forward. So without further ado, let's introduce the star of our show. This is a little micro servo motor. It is in fact an SG90. Now much like the stepper motor we looked at previously, this is a very common component and quite inexpensive. If you've got one of those bulk project kits, it's probably got at least one of these things in it. And if you have a random servo, it's probably an SG90. So given how common this thing is, it's going to be very useful to understand how it works and how we can drive it. So what is a servo motor? Well, the stepper motor that we looked at previously, this guy here, this moves using relative positioning. That is to say that each movement you make with it is stacked on top of all of the previous movements you've made. So if I'm at the zero degree position with this stepper motor and I say move by 10 degrees, then I'm going to end up at the 10 degree position. But if I'm at the 90 degree position and I say move by 10 degrees, I'm going to end up at the 100 degree position. So you can see where you end up as the result of a movement depends on where you started that movement. It's a relative position. Now the servo on the other hand, this guy, this uses absolute positioning. So what that means is if I'm at zero degrees and I say move to the 10 degree position, that's move to 10 degrees rather than by 10 degrees, then the server will move me to 10 degrees. But if I'm at the 90 degree position and I say move to 10 degrees, the servo will actually move 80 degrees in the other direction to put me at the 10 degree position that I asked for. So with a servo, you always tell it where you want it to be and you let it work out how it has to move in order to put itself at that position. So that's a very useful feature of a servo and it's the fundamental difference between a servo motor and something like this stepper motor. So in order to make that happen, a servo motor has to understand where it is and it needs to know where its zero position is and where its maximum movement position is. So with this little SG90, it has a zero degrees minimum movement position and a maximum movement position of only 180 degrees. So that means it can swing between zero degrees and 180 degrees. It can do a half rotation. So you can't tell it to spin around four times, it can't do that, um, but you can tell it to move anywhere you like between the zero and 180 degree position. So that's still quite useful. And it should be noted that that movement arc limitation isn't a specific feature of servo motors, it's just this SG90. You can get servos, and indeed they look a lot like stepper motors, that can perform multiple rotations, and you can use them like a regular motor. But they're quite expensive and quite rare, and I don't have one to play with today. All I've got is this little SG90, so that's what we're going to look at. Right, enough talking, let's get this thing wired up and moving. Okay, so that's all there is to wiring it up. It's, uh, it's very, very simple. The servo motor itself just has three connecting pins. What we have is a, a ground pin. This is a common ground. We have a voltage in and we have a single signal line. So on the SG90, they're color coded like this. The brown wire is the common ground. The red wire, that's the one in the middle, that's where you put your voltage in, and an SG90 like this runs on around about 5 volts. 
and the orange wire, this final wire, that's the signal wire, and that's how you control the thing. So this is basically about as easy to wire up as it can be. It's just three wires in total and one single GPIO pin. So here I've got this connected to GPIO pin zero, and this other connector here, that's just the common ground back to the, uh, the ground on my power supply here. So there we are, that's how you wire it up. Let's run some software and make it move. All right, well, that's definitely got it moving. So here you can see the servo is rapidly swinging backwards and forwards between the zero degrees position and the 180 degrees maximum movement position. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Now that little white piece of plastic that it's waving around so frantically there, that's called a servo horn. And when you buy a servo, it'll come with a selection of little plastic attachments, different shaped horns that you can connect to it and use to interface with various projects. And you can and of course put a gear wheel or something on there if that's the appropriate thing to use for your application. So there's actually a lot of torque in that movement. The SG90 has a torque rating of 1.5 kilograms at one centimeter. So what that means is at a distance of one centimeter from the central shaft the SG90 can move loads up to 1.5 kilograms. So that's actually very impressive, and it's because of this high torque and precise movement that servos are excellent candidates for robotics projects. But how do we actually tell this servo to move around? How are we controlling this thing? Well, a servo like this uses something called PWM, or Pulse Width Modulation. And that's really useful because the Raspberry Pi Pico here is an excellent board when it comes to PWM applications. It actually has eight PWM generators built into the hardware, and each one of those generators has two outputs for a total of 16 signals. And even better than that, you can map any one of those 16 signals to any GPIO pin. So that's very, very useful. We have lots of signals and lots of flexibility. And I'm sure it won't be long before we see some of those nice servo hexapod robot chassis being controlled with a Raspberry Pi Pico as the brain. In fact, I think that will make for a very interesting video. So how do we go about creating a PWM control signal for use with our servo? Well, it's actually quite easy. And here we are on my Raspberry Pi 400 desktop and I've loaded up the source code to the little demo we've been looking at. So here on line 9, we create a PWM object and we bind it to a particular GPIO pin. In this case, we're using pin 0. So that means our PWM signal will be emitted on GPIO pin 0. The next thing we do is to set the frequency of that signal. And as the name might suggest, a PWM signal is a pulsing signal. So we need to tell it how fast we'd like that pulse to be generated. So here we've selected a pulse of 50. Uh, that means 50 times per second or 50 hertz. And that matches the control signal that the servo expects. So that means we're going to be toggling the selected GPIO pin between the high and low states 50 times a second. So the second parameter that we care about and actually the more important parameter in this case is the duty cycle. So what that means is if we were to look at our PWM signal that we're generating and we zoomed in so that we were looking at just 1 50th of a second of it, one single slice of that frequency, we would see the pin high for a certain amount of that time and the remainder of the time it would be low. The duty cycle specifies what percentage of an individual pulse the pin remains high for and the remaining time it will be low. So if you have a 50% duty cycle, then you have 50% of the pulse in the high state and 50% in the low. If you have an 80% duty cycle, then you have 80% in the high and the remaining 30% is low. And you can specify whatever duty cycle you want. Of course, you can even have a 0% duty cycle or a 100% duty cycle. And that would mean your pin would be either fully on or fully off. So for the servo we have here, the data sheet says that a 5% duty cycle 
corresponds to the zero degrees position and a 10% duty cycle corresponds to the 180 degree maximum movement position. It's not quite as clear cut as that. You actually have to calculate those numbers, but that's what it works out as. Now on the Raspberry Pi Pico, the MicroPython environment actually uses an integer to represent the duty cycle. Uh, so you have to sort of calculate what a 50% or whatever duty cycle will look like. The maximum value of the duty cycle parameter is 65,025. So if you want a duty cycle of 5% of the 65,025 maximum, you would end up with a number 3,251.25. So that there is 5% uh, duty cycle. 10% duty cycle, unsurprisingly, it's twice the 5%. Ignoring the 0.25 or 0.5, because this is an integer, and that should give us, let's say, 3,252 and 6,503. But it didn't quite work out that way. When I plugged those numbers in, I found that the servo wasn't moving between the absolute minimum and maximum ranges that it was supposed to. So really what I had to go and do was to tune it in and I just kept adjusting those numbers uh, and watching the servo until I found some numbers that matched the maximum and minimum range. So the moral of this story seems to be the data sheet is just a guide and you may have to do some fiddling around to find out what your actual servo duty cycles look like. But once you've found what those numbers actually are, all you need to do is to set the duty cycle of your PWM signal and your servo should rotate to the desired orientation. So the rest of this program down here, this little loop, all it's doing is it's starting at the minimum duty cycle, the zero degrees position, and it's working its way up towards the maximum, the 180 degree position. And once it gets there, it starts working its way back down again just traveling smoothly from the minimum position all the way to the maximum and then once it gets there it travels back again from the maximum all the way back to the minimum and loops around. So there you are. Really that's all there is to controlling one of these servos. Once you've worked out what your minimum and maximum movement ranges are and the minimum and maximum duty cycles that correspond to those movement positions, you can then just set the value to anywhere in that range and the motor will turn accordingly. As usual, I will upload this code to my GitHub page, and if anybody's interested, they're very welcome to go check it out. I hope this video has been helpful, and thank you for watching.